Hi, everybody, and welcome <laughs> back to our YouTube channel. As always, we are your hosts, Arna and Carlos, and today we have some behind the scenes uh, from one of our books, uh, Norwegian Knits with a Twist. Yeah. And this is the English, or is it the American? This is the American version yeah, of American. our book. Um, the Americans decided to translate it into Norwegian knits uh, with a twist. If you see here, we've got the um, we've got the Danish version, which is uh, it actually says knits from Sætestal. Uh, our book was more specific than uh, Norwegian. It was from the region of Sætestal in the south of Norway. But I suppose I mean we never really discussed it with our American publisher. But I suppose that they felt that. Um, Norwegian was a more general term that more people would understand than Sætestal. Um, and that's why there is not much variation in this book. It's because it's all from this particular region, uh, which is most famous for the iconic iconic X and O pattern uh, yeah. that most people uh, around the world now recognize as a Norwegian. Hello. Now, you're wondering about what uh, what is going on here. We've got a microphone here. Yeah, and it's, you're not going to sing. We're not going to sing. No. We're not going to perform any songs. This is because... We had a little mishap with uh, the microphones that we usually wear, uh, and so we needed to find a solution. So it's just something that happens sometime, and it happened today. Yeah. So you anyway, you can hide it under the dress. Under the dress. Yeah. So we so. started with a little. We started with a little collage. Uh, when we started this video, we had we had them film um, a little collage that showed a few items uh, that we have selected uh, from Sattestal that mm -hmm. we also selected. For the book because the, if there's something we love doing is doing these visual collages with things that are related in one way or another with the topic of the book mm. and every time we work with a new book we also collect a lot of stuff who has a connection to the team yeah. we're working with mm -hmm. so for when we worked with satastal we had to collect all the stuff we had so we brought some some of the treasure this is a very nice book yes a really old book. Yeah, this one's very valuable and it's kept. So we had to put plastic because it was going apart. And in this book we have pictures of the, the, the folk costumes from this region. Yes, be careful. And on this one you can see the man's outfit, the bunad, with the knitted, uh, what do you call that? The, 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 the jumper, the sweater. Jumper with the X and the O's inside. So this one was part of the, or is still part of the folk costume. And there was also a lot of different patterns you could buy in the arts and crafts community in Norway, mm -hmm. with different variation on the X and the O. Yeah. So we, we used this also as inspiration. Do we have a picture of the skirt? And we have a picture of the There we go. This outfit. is the skirt, be careful. This so. is the skirt here that you're seeing on the table. Yeah. Uh, Arne's ancestors uh, from his mother's side uh, came from Sattestal. Uh, and so we also are privileged to own a few pieces uh, that have come from yeah. uh, so the family. The, this piece, which on, is on the table, we found that in the, in, the, in the barn, on the farm where she came from. And you can see this is the same as this one. Yeah. And then on top of the of this dress there is uh, embroidery. And we also have one of those. But we framed it. Yes. So I just had to pick it up. It's a huge picture. Oh you Voila. put it upside down now. No, this is the way we put it on the wall because oh, yeah. it looks better. But but, but on the dress, on the dress it, goes it goes that way. That way. And it's got this beautiful embroidery uh, going up and down. And uh, this kind of embroidery is uh, something that is nowadays a dying craft that not many people can do anymore because it's the knowledge is passed from generation to generation mm -hmm. and a kind of dying art now. But luckily there's still some people who are able to do it. So hopefully it will be able to be saved and preserved for the future. Yeah, and inspired of that one, we made this necklace. We made a knitted necklace uh, where we did these balls with the colors that we found in the embroideries. So you have this, the, the, the pink and the red together, which a lot of people think that pink and red together, that's a little bit strange. But it wasn't but it, the... It, it's in the old... Embroideries. Embroideries. Yeah. And also purple. 
So the idea with what we're doing today is we want to go uh, a little bit back down memory lane and look at a few of the pictures and tell you a little bit about the behind the scenes. We don't want to focus too much on the uh, on the facts because uh, this region is very rich and there's so much we could talk about and unfortunately we don't have enough time for that. But maybe one day we will do a folk costume embroidery and then we'll talk about this as Maybe much we as should we can. invite one of the experts to our YouTube channel and she can talk about it. That because would be, we have a woman in Norway who knows everything about that this. That would be so. a fantastic idea to get Anumur Sunmu yeah. to come here and talk about this for you. Because every time we work with Sattestal or any knitwear from Norway, we always look at her books. Yeah. And some of them are translated to English, I think. Yeah, and she's incredible. She's one of the best she's there the best. is the in Norway. So we've got pictures like this uh, in the book. Uh, this is actually done on our terrace. Um, we just made it look like a loft. Because we found a lot of inspiration in the loft where my grandmother came from. So we had to... Yeah, we found all these things. Yeah, we found the postcards, stuff. we found the dress that was there, or the, the folk costume. So we had to make this. So the idea was to recreate and construct this kind of a loft feeling uh, and kind of tell a story about how all these pieces came from a loft and then we use them to design a collection inspired by, by the loft. Mm -hmm. So, and so that was one of the things, you know, I mean, the good thing about having a terrace like that, that is <laughs> all in wood, is that you can actually just uh, use a little corner, as we did here, and turn it into a loft. Yeah. And a lot of people, when they work with inspiration from Sattestal, they normally tend to work with the X and the O. That's like the most, it's the easiest approach. Mm -hmm. Just use the X and the O. But we, we looked at other stuff. We looked at the embroideries, yeah, as I said. The embroidery. And we also have another embroidery on the, on the dress that we also made in mm -hmm. knitwear. And we love, we'll talk about that later, but we love doing these images that are just, you know, showing the inspiration. So when you look at an image like this, you can understand a little bit about the colors. You can understand a little bit about the crafts and then you can kind of tie it together with the designs that are in the book. Mm -hmm. And we hope that people see it and make a connection. It's important to not give too much away, not serve it with a, you know, like spoon fed, but let people look at the images and kind of create their own images. We find that is very important and actually people find very stimulating. And if you wonder, most of the stuff, or actually all of the stuff in the books are our stuff. So when you yeah. look in our books, you also get a little peek into our, our universe, private universe. Yeah. So here we've got some of the photos that you've seen from a book and a couple of sweaters that we have designed, you know, with all of this inspiration in mind. Let's see what else we can find here. Um, yeah, again, the kind of feeling of the loft with the, you know, the spinning and everything that I'm sure your grandmother did as well when they spun their mm. own uh, yarns to make their own folk costumes and embroideries. So we kind of wanted to bring a little bit of that. Uh, the photo shoot was uh, one of the only ones where we've actually included a third person in our book. <laughs> Usually uh, Arna and I do all the modeling of all the clothes, <laughs> but we had a few uh, pieces uh, that were female, female sweaters, and so we needed to book a model for that. And normally we don't need a model because we do all this small stuff. Yeah. That you don't need a model for it. So. But for this particular book, we needed a model, and so uh, Ulrike came and uh, joined in. Yeah. Uh, the teddy, of course, uh, the idea of the knitted teddy bear is something, uh, because it's got the X and O, the set to stall pattern, and the idea was to do, you know, new things, not only just sweaters and mittens and socks, you know, things that people do all the time. We wanted to design a little teddy bear with the patterns, and our idea is that uh, grandmothers and mothers and grandfathers and fathers will knit these for the kids and grandkids. And then the children will grow up getting a relationship with the Norwegian traditions and patterns. So that's our idea behind the teddy bear. And also he's really cute. He's very cute. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what else we can talk about. This yeah, here we go. Other. This is the what Arne was talking about originally when he said that um, we took these embroideries uh, that are actually very intricate and it's a dying art. Not many people uh, know how to do this anymore because the information has been passed from generation to generation and the Norwegian Arts and Crafts Association is now trying to protect and 
keep these things alive. Uh, so they've put them on a red list, is what they call, of things that are in danger of dying out. And this this is called Leuesum, mm -hmm. and it's uh, in that list now. But we took the idea of the embroidery and then translated it into knitting and kind of put knitting patterns that kind of relate to these embroideries. So if you're not into embroidery, you can always knit a piece and you can put that with a black and mm -hmm. white sweater and then it looks like it's traditional. And yeah, so and then it's, there's... It's a way to make it look... There's lot, loads of things. And there's I, you, I, I, you, Carlos has a model. I had to be the model for this picture. Um, <laughs> I don't really like it, so let's go fast forward a little bit. Uh, and then, of course, we've got uh, the picture of Freya. Uh, oh, by the way, we'll do this as well. These are mittens, uh, and this is an uh, Orkla uh, design. Like this one. Inspired by these uh, woven tapestries that uh, are also from uh, Satterstone. Yeah, we found a lot of pictures or, and old paintings of people in their houses, and mm. there was always something like this on the wall or on the beds. So we inspired ourselves from other techniques uh, in weaving and also embroidery, as we showed you before, to create designs as the mittens. Yeah. Uh, what else is there? There's a, there's a blanket. Uh, the blanket is inspired by knitted socks that come from the region that you wear together with your folk costume when you have the, the knickerbockers, the, tr the trousers that go just under the knee, the men's trousers. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you usually do a, a design like this for socks and we turn it into a blanket. So yeah, it was a great book. Uh, we did the photo shoot in 2013 yeah. and it was published uh, in the fall of 2013 in Norway and then it got published in 2014 in the rest of the world. And this is one of those books that people love in America. I think that a lot of Norwegian Americans, they are so proud of their heritage in Norway and they love all these Norwegian things. And so I think that our book kind of hits that spot for a lot of people, especially people living in places like uh, Washington state, like in Seattle, people coming from Minneapolis, oh, sorry, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, uh, North Dakota, mm. all these places with a concentration of Scandinavian people. And uh, also in Germany, it was very popular. Germany was very popular. Denmark, it was very yeah. popular. Uh, and then we finalized it with a little chapter on double knitting that doesn't really have anything to do with uh, with Satterstall, I guess. You just had to add something. But we just added this because <laughs> it was a fun technique to do. So we've got these little coasters that we can do. And we, you know, included some of the knitting designs from Satterstall in the patterns. And they're double knitted. That means that you have two sides. You're knitting two sides at the same time, a positive side and a negative side. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and always in our books, uh, if we can, we tend to finish with Christmas. But that's what we're best known for, uh, the Christmas balls yeah. and Christmas. Most of the books have Christmas, not the garden book. Yeah. No, so. And this is for the mouse. The mouse yeah, for the computer. Mouse pad. So. With X and O. I think that, uh, let's see, the final pages are the, the, um, the designs again uh, that we showed you in the book. And I think this concludes the trip down memory lane <laughs> to 2013 and uh, Strik for stop. We hope you found this uh, tutorial, or sorry, it's not a tutorial. We, saw, so, we hope you found this uh, video entertaining. And if you have the book, uh, now you know a little bit more about the stories around uh, the book and uh, our photo shoot and how the whole thing went down. Uh, if you've enjoyed watching this uh, and you're not a subscriber, we'd really love it if you could hit on that subscribe button. If you uh, are watching the video and if you liked it, please uh, do the click on the like comment or the thumbs up, I think it is. You give it a big thumbs up. And uh, we are here every week, every Sunday, we bring you tutorials and fun videos to help you with your crafting and to give you ideas and inspiration. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. And see you again <laughs> next week. Bye. Bye.